Uh, Father, we celebrated the Feast of uh, Pentecost Sunday yesterday. You uh, dedicated part of your sermon uh, yesterday, Father, here at Immaculate Conception to, um, as you mentioned, our, our country, some of the uh, evils that are besetting our, our country, and in particular, um, I guess, some of the uh, retail giants of the, uh, of the country who are, um, as you said, just promoting and marketing um, a lot of perversions, uh, the LGBT perversion specifically, um, directly to our children and um, mentioned uh, just a, a bit of concerns um, beca because of all of that. But um, Father, any, any other further comments on that, um, on that thought tonight? Well, there will always be more comments about that. It's an ongoing controversy, Tom, but it shouldn't be. Uh, it shouldn't be even a, a controversy. It's just insanity that this is happening. But it's a, it's a criminal insanity, and it's being forced. Um, and it's true, I did make those comments, not during the um, uh, sermon of the, f s the first Mass at 7 o'clock in the morning at Immaculate Conception, but during the sermon of the second Mass, the 9 a.m. Mass. So those who would turn, tune in to what Catholics believe and listen to the sermon of the first, that is the 7 a.m. Mass, would not hear those comments. Only those who were at the second Mass or who tuned in for the, the sermon at the 9 a.m. Mass uh, would, would hear those comments. And I'm very reluctant to talk about such things from the pulpit. For example, I didn't mention the uh, litigate, uh, whatever they call it, the L-G-B-T-Q-M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. I didn't mention any of that uh, by name from the pulpit. I, I consider that to be very... Um, Degrading, you know. Uh, but also, um, you know, there are little ears present that I don't want to scandalize them either. But um, in spite of the fact that I'm reluctant to talk about such things to the pulpit, uh, I was moved to do so by the advice of a patriarch, a patriarch at Immaculate Conception, who uh, I, I have a high regard for his wisdom. And um, um, after the men's meeting last Thursday, I made some comments about how we have to oppose this evil, which has already explicitly stated, we are coming for your children. And uh, after the meeting was finished, uh, and I, I'd finished with those comments, this gentleman came up and said, you need to say that from the pulpit. You really need to say that from the pulpit. And I objected. I said, well, I'm concerned about the young, innocent ears out there. So said, no, you need to say that from the pulpit. People need to hear that. So at the second Mass on Sunday, I determined, well, you know, I'll yield to that, uh, as they call it, the superior wisdom, and uh, did actually comment on this. You were there. No, you weren't there. Right? You were at the 7 a.m. Mass. Oh, that's fine. So you, you dodged the, uh, <laughs> you dodged that. But um, now the, the, the whole point was that uh, uh, we have a, a movement going on here in America uh, which is the transgenderism movement now, which has taken on a lot of steam because it is being uh, fanned by, the flames are being fanned by government, education, uh, corporate powers, retail giants, as you mentioned. They're all pushing this madly on the children. And as you know, the San Francisco Gay Chorus already announced a few years ago we are coming for your children. We are coming to take your children. And um, even that, that video of the uh, San Francisco so-called gay chorus uh, evidently did not awaken the, uh, the parents of America to the Im impending danger. Because they're very serious. They mean that. They mean very much. They are coming for our children. Um, even this uh, Karine uh, Jean-Pierre, who is Biden's chosen press secretary, <clears throat> she's a homosexual. And um, she was meeting recently with uh, a group. In fact, I have something about that here. She was meeting with a homosexual group here. White House press secretary Karine Jean-Pierre declared this week that the children of America belong to all of us. And who is all of us? All of us 
is the 34th annual GLAAD, G-L-A-A-D, Media Awards. That's the homosexual awards group there. And uh, she says, the children of America belong to all of us. And she's talking about then transitioning children, okay? And um, this is monstrous, but this is the mentality. They cannot have their own children. They want yours. They're coming for yours. And they want to, they're going to traffic them. They are going to feast on them. Um, they're going to raise them in their ideology or their fetish, which is what it really is. A, um, and uh, it's a pathological fetish. Uh, but they are militant. They are militant about it. And so we've seen this now, the, these, the so-called merchandise of children's clothing being uh, marketed in Target, very, very prominently in Target, so much so that it actually provoked a backlash. Yes, there were actually people who spoke up about it. And uh, Target was uh, put on the defensive. And they actually took this, this combination a uh, transgender uh, atro atro atrocity, this, this children's line of clothing, uh, designed by a Satanist, an avowed Satanist. They took it and they put it in the back of the store to make it not so prominent. And then, lo and behold, the transgenders went on the attack because Target had made that concession to the decent people of America, right? Uh, because Target had done that, at least taken this satanic transgender wear that they were pushing in the face of everybody coming into their stores, including the children, and put it in the back of their stores, the transgender people who are extremely brazen and, and violent people. But of course, how could they be otherwise? There's a pathology associated with this. There's a mental, a psychological pathology associated with this. And so they immediately began threatening, uh, began threatening the target stores, even threatening to burn them down, threatening to blow them up. Um, but the, also a, a, an educational association, supposedly representing teachers, uh, threatened target that if you remove this merchandise from the prominence in your store, you'll be responsible for the deaths of these uh, gender dysphoria children because 40% of them uh, have thoughts of doing themselves in. And so you will precipitate that and be responsible for like this wave of, of uh, these children killing themselves. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. It's not rational. It's not meant to be. Uh, it's not, it has nothing to do with reality or truth. It, it's all about uh, the hammer and the force. And so, so LGBTQ uh, actually has backed off on that. In fact, I have to be careful here because I'm actually mixing up a couple of things. Uh, one of them, I'm mixing up uh, the Target displays with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Okay, the Los Angeles Dodgers actually heard from uh, an educational association, and the Los Angeles Dodgers were hearing that they might be responsible for the death of all these pilger children because. They had arranged and announced that um, this group of, uh, what do you call it, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, these transvestite men <clears throat> dressing up as, of course, traditional nuns, wearing traditional habits, because there's no really modern Novus Ordo habit to wear that identifies you as a nun. Um, um, I mean, modern so-called religious sisters dressing in street dress, dress, they're so frumpy. I mean, you could, you could actually tell that somebody is a nun just by the, the frumpiness of the dress they've been. But, but they, didn't, they didn't even want that. They wanted to wear the traditional dress. And whenever they want to mock religion, they always have them in traditional uh, dress as a priest or a sister because the modern just doesn't work. There's no way to mock that. There's no way to make uh, the, to, to uh, make a caricature of the modern way. It is a caricature in itself. 
So these guys go around with their beards and so on, dressed as in these habits of, of traditional nuns. And they um, actually indulge in all kinds of lascivious and, and, uh, and uh, immoral behavior. And um, so the Dodgers actually invited them to celebrate them, to honor and award them. And the word got out that, um, that among the people who had any faith, and hope, and charity, any, uh, any real faith or love for our Lord, uh, or at least common decency, <laughs> at least that, came out and uh, really let the Dodgers at organization know that uh, they were uh, appalled at this decision and they opposed it. And there would be consequences, um, at least in the box office there. Um, and so the Dodgers uh, then retracted the, the invitation. They rescinded the invitation and said that these, these uh, transvestites would not be invited and honored. And then the transvestites themselves came back at the Dodgers organization, threatened them. And the uh, Educational Association, I think it was the California Educational Association, if I'm not mistaken, um, actually came out and uh, told the Dodgers they would be responsible for the deaths of many children because they had withdrawn the offer to award these people uh, for their mockery of the Catholic faith and mockery of our Lord. So then the Dodgers changed their mind again. Then the Dodgers re-invited these people to come and to be a part. But they also introduced a day to celebrate faith and family. And I'm, I, I, hope, I hope that nobody falls for this, um, that, that nobody falls for this, this tactic or this ploy. Uh, I hope nobody allows himself to be, to be manipulated by this. Option. But it's not just the Dodgers and it's not just Target. Now we find Walmart is marketing this transgender children's clothing. Kohl's is also uh, marketing this, this uh, transgender children's clothing. And um, what's behind it is that uh, it's corporate, actually. You see, Vanguard, BlackRock, um, the, 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 the major corporations that actually are the corporations that own the other corporations that own the other corporations. Um, and there's so much power concentrated in the hands of a few people. And so many of them themselves are perverts that they're actually using their power to try to pervert the entire world. They're, this is their life. I mean, this, this, this is what they dream about. This is what they eat, sleep, and, uh, and this is what they care about. This perversion defines who they are as far as they're concerned. It is a very important part of the World Economic Forum program and their new world order. Um, the uh, Harari and the rest of his crowd, they're all into this. And it has a practical reason for them. It has a practical reason that it enables them to have a certain control over human fertility and the beginning of children, the... Uh, the population. They want, they want to be able to have a certain control over the population and the breeding of the human being. <clears throat> and this is one way they're getting it. They're using homosexuality and all of its manifestations as a tool to grant them control to depopulate the earth. But it's not just a practical tool. It's an ideological tool with them. Uh, because it is there great fetish. It, it is, it is, you might call it in a sense, their idol, their God, small g here. Um, and uh, they cannot rest until everyone uh, submits, agrees, approves, applauds, all of this. Um, this is what is coming down the line of the corporate chain of command to our managers, locally uh, and to those who you know direct the the stores over certain areas uh they're getting the word that they have to do this if they won't do it they'll find someone who will um so they don't the story is they don't care how much money they lose um because it's only temporary they lose a billion 10 billion 11 billion dollars 
in a day or a week or a month. It doesn't matter. Why? Because the parent corporations going, you know, back multiple, up multiple levels, they have hundreds and hundreds of billions, billions and billions of dollars behind them. And it's a drop in the bucket for them. And they also realize that uh, this cabal of, of fetishists are so literally hellbent on dominating uh, that uh, it, it, they really don't care that, that they're, they're going to be losing retail sales. Um, they've got us, they think, where, where, they, where they want us, and that is that we'll have nowhere to go. We'll have nowhere to shop. And they're ultimately going to recoup whatever losses they have anyway. It's just a matter of time before they get it all anyway. Um, their whole objective for 2030, as you know, is that we will own nothing. Um, whatever we want, need, or want, we'll have to get from them. And they'll have to concede it to us. Um, but we'll be totally dependent upon them, ultimately. So, you know, losing uh, so many billions of dollars of sales of Bud Light beer or Target, you know, even the Target investors, right? the, the stock value of stock goes down. None of that matters today because they say that in the course of time, we're going to get it all anyway. Um, so those who are in the uh, position of having to make decisions on the local level find themselves uh, really under the gun. Um, I'm sure many of them are in that position because they agree with the ideology. But there are those who don't, no doubt, and they will be hard-pressed then to make the right decision to say, we will not support this in any way. But what I said during the sermon time was that we have to oppose it in every way. We have to oppose this in every way we possibly can. Because they've, they've said out loud, in, in the exact words, we are coming for your children. And I would recommend we not wait until they're on the doorstep or hovering over the child's crib to try to stop them. I'd recommend that we take whatever steps we can. First of all, starting to let, by letting them know, you are not taking my children. I will not let you, and I will, I will oppose you in every way I can. And uh, then we'd, we'd better start figuring out what that is. Starting with prayer and being strong ourselves in our faith is very obvious. That's where we all need to start. But uh, it can't stay there. It can't stop there. That's the beginning. We have to formulate practical plans on how we are going to protect our children from being transgendered, transformed, uh, transmuted into... Into what? Into... into alien beings, you know, um, that are hardly recognizable as human. That, that's, well, transhuman. That's where they want to go. They want to transhumanize your children. It's a very evil thing. What could some of those practical steps look like, Father? <laughs> well, I mean, in these, uh, the, the more brazen they are, the more people like you and I are supposed to cower before them the more they, they are supported by government, the more you and I are supposed to be terrified by government powers that protect and support and, uh, and uh, promote all of these things, you know? I mean, the American military is going this way now. The FBI seems very much uh, given to protecting and promoting this whole ideology. And we're supposed to be afraid of this. And and just let it happen without nary, with nary a whimper. We have these pride parades going through our cities, <coughs> and uh, hardly a, a voice is raised. If there is a voice raised, it's soon squelched or ignored by the media, certainly. So we have thousands, sometimes tens of thousands, of those marching right through our cities uh, in all of their regalia, or perhaps without anything. Oh, you know, it's just completely um, uh, given uh, given to licentiousness and uh, and uh, 
you know, public indecency. And nothing is said. The laws are not enforced by the, by, the, by the law enforcement. Maybe they feel helpless. Maybe they feel they have, they have no support from the higher-ups. Um, uh, if they have any will to, to uh, enforce the laws, they certainly get no, get no incentive to do so. So um, we need to actually respond to this. Now, you know, people might say, well, I do. I mean, I get angry about it. I'm disgusted by it. Anger is not a response. It's a reaction. Uh, disgust is not a response. It's a reaction. Even the people telling the jokes about these, these other people, the laughing is not a response. It, it's just a reaction and very unhelpful. But a, re a response from us would be motivated by faith, hope, and charity. That's a response now. And the response would be, well, for one thing, to march down that same route. But to do it for the sake of making reparation to Almighty God for the blasphemy that goes on. there, And the direct challenge, I mean, we're talking about the type of sin that cries to heaven for vengeance from God. And, uh, and where are we? Are we busy making reparation? Well, we, we go down to the, the city, uh, the, 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 the courthouse, Hamilton County Courthouse, we pray the rosary each month. That's a good start. But as someone, uh, a very uh, fine gentleman in town, just recently said, this happens year after year, and there's no response to it, really. We need to begin to give a response. Uh, first of all, to make reparation to Almighty God for this insult. We have to also demonstrate that we're not intimidated and we're not afraid of them. Because they're bullies. And as soon as you show weakness and you show cowardice, they will annihilate you and completely dominate you. But as, like any bullies, when you show that you're not afraid of them, they cannot intimidate you. Immediately they begin to withdraw and it puts them on, on notice. You cannot get away with anything just because you feel like it. Uh, and uh, we need to send that message. The primary message we need to send, though, is that we're asking God to have mercy. We're begging God's mercy for ourselves. Yes, for ourselves, for our city, of course. But we're also imploring God's mercy for them. We're imploring God's mercy for those very people who in June are strutting down that street and flaunting their their perversion. And we need to, to actually implore God's mercy for them too. Now they may show up when we do. I mean, if we, if we actually arrange to have those streets um, basically put aside for our use for that purpose of making a, a procession of reparation to God, uh, they may come out in force to, uh, to assault us to accost us, to who knows what. I mean, the, the, the vile language they use, it's all a symptom of the, of the fundamental perversion that is, that is attacking them like a cancer. All of that, everything, uh, you know, all of the, all of the eagle, ugliness and the filth and the blasphemy and the profanity that, that just pours out of them comes out of the, the hearts, as the Lord says. And this is what is in their hearts. But again, you know, if we're there to make reparation, then that kind of treatment is not going to deter us because it's just another avenue for us, another means for us to make reparation to God, for them. And in a sense, we'd be, again, doing for them what our Lord has done for all of us and offering up for us the very, the very suffering that we cause him by our sins. So. I think our Lord is calling upon us to do that right now. They may think that, okay, we're out there to confront them. And actually, we're not out there to confront them. We're out there to, to speak to God and to um, uh, apologize to Almighty God and to implore His mercy. Yes, for them too. And uh, that's not, you know, intended to be a direct confrontation is that we're going to have a, a rumble with them. We have no intention of that. We don't want that. Um, we fear that 
that they that they will see it as that, but uh, that's not our point at all. Our point is to seek the mercy of God. And I think we should be doing that everywhere. I think everywhere in all the cities, wherever there's one of these pride, pride parades, as it's called, um, there should be within a matter of a month or two or whatever it takes, um, you know, a, a procession uh, imploring the mercy of God and his forgiveness uh, and his deliverance from this. So that's one thing we can't do. Mm. Uh, as I've said from the pulpit on Sunday time, if we can't stand up and oppose this and make it clear to them, those who are saying, like this Karine Jean-Pierre, that these are our children, these are our, your children are our children, um, if we can't say, no, they're not, they're not your children, and you can't have them, then we deserve everything we get. We deserve everything we're going to get, and it's not going to be pretty. Then we don't even deserve the right to complain about it. If we, if we don't have the gumption or the faith or the hope or the charity to stand up and oppose this, then... Well, but what's left for us? What, what is there left of us, even? Um, shame is not, uh, is not a strong enough word, I know. People who, are, who take the anti-homosexual uh, gay lifestyle approach, the anti-abortion approach, the abortionists and the homosexuals, the LTBPs, whatever, they're shouting, shame, shame, shame. Actually, it's just the opposite. We should be ashamed if we don't do that. Very ashamed. Um, so we, it needs to be done. We have to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to do it for the children. We have to let it make note that they cannot take our children. We're not going to give them up. We're not going to surrender them. What would you say to those who are concerned about the, um, the reaction from these types of people? The, the type of reaction that might provoke from them? I would say this is what you get, you know? Um, this is what you get when the devil is mad at you. You know, he come, he 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 is he is, is a very bad adversary in the sense that he he's full of spite and hate, and this is how he reacts. I mean, an exorcist during an exorcism no know, knows the malice of Satan. He's, he's confronted by it. Um, so an exorcist once was asked. What's the worst thing you, you have to deal with in an exorcism? You know, they're thinking, well, head spinning around, right? Bodies flying through the air and all that. And he said, no, 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 none of that, none of that. He said, no, what is really the, the horror, most horrible thing about an exorcism is that you, you realize that you are coming face to face with an entity that actually hates, hates you, hates you with a complete malicious hatred hates you, wants to annihilate you. And you look into the faces of those uh, abortionists and uh, transsexuals and all the rest, that's what you see. Um, you know, they try to be all this uh, swishy, even to the point of offending women. They say, women, real women don't act like that. That's a man trying to act like a woman according to a man's way of thinking a woman acts. But women don't act like that. A lot of women are offended by these guys, these effeminate men, who uh, almost are making a mockery of women and, and, and a, just a, a caricature of women. Like this guy who was on the, they put on the beer, their beer cans, right? Uh, there are a lot of women who look at this and think, this is disgraceful, this is disgusting. That, that, this isn't womanhood. Who is the, what is this creature trying to be here? Certainly not a woman. If this is how certain men think women are, then there's something wrong with them. Um, even women see that. Uh, and they're offended by it. But uh, in any case, um, in an exorcism, you see that malice of Satan. You see that same malice on the face of the abortionists, uh, the face of the uh, transgenderites and all the rest. who are pushing all of this, that if you oppose them, they come at you basically with the malice of Satan himself. Uh, our Lord knew that very well. He confronted that all the time, right? 
And uh, our Lord, uh, you know, he wants us to oppose Satan. He, he still, still sent out his apostles on Ascension Thursday to confront this. He inspired them on Pentecost Sunday and filled them with a zeal to do exactly that. And if we are going to call ourselves Catholics today, we better be ready to do that. Otherwise, we're frauds. You know? But uh, so be it. I mean, we have to confront this, uh, confront this evil. Mm -hmm. And the only way to confront it is with faith and the hope that faith inspires and the charity that faith and hope beget, as it were. Uh, it has to be motivated ultimately by love, love for God and love for souls. Otherwise, it's doomed to failure. So anyway, that, that's just one idea uh, of what can be done. But of course, uh, I mean, this it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, uh, that we've got to get our children away from these people. If they're in the government schools, they're being indoctrinated. At least you have to, you have to expect that they will be. They're targeted for indoctrination in the government schools. Uh, teachers who will not indoctrinate the children are targeted also in the, in the public schools now, very often, uh, because they have woke principals uh, and uh, vice principals and so on, and school boards and so on, uh, full of revolutionaries. Um, so you've got to get your children away from them to begin with. Don't put your children in their power. Um, these Satan, these after-school Satan clubs, they're all expression, expression of the same thing. The Satanists are all about this. Why? Because it's a, it's a rebellion against Almighty God, the Creator. And so the Satanists are, are all part of it. They're all mixed in it together. So in any, in any case, uh, Tom, enough said. If anybody wants to uh, go online and check out the second sermon on Sunday, that's the 9 o'clock Mass sermon, they're welcome to do so. Okay. But we're going to be uh, exploring these, these things going forward.